For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Like I can remember as a little kid going to uh, training camps and, and seeing players and, and guys who you see as your heroes when you're a little kid, and that chance to connect, I just think is invaluable. Chris Ballard reflecting on his up-close experience as a young boy, interacting with NFL players, to his role now as general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. We get Ballard's take on the state of the business of professional football, and breaking down the numbers on what it means for cities like Westfield, a big score or something less. And the legendary Snoop Dogg's take on the Colts' bold mental health initiative. From the depths of the sea, back to the black Snoop Doggy Dog. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from Westfield, Grand Park in Westfield. We are actually in Colts City. This is the Play 60 area of Colts camp. That young lady, an aspiring Colts player, just uh, got her 40 timed at 7.49 seconds. A fun time here at Grand Park in Westfield. This is home once again this year to the Indianapolis Colts training camp. The Colts have called Grand Park in Westfield home since 2018. They're in the midst of a 10-year deal in which the team pays the city about $650,000 in exchange for use of the facilities. A report to the Westfield Redevelopment Commission indicates the city has been losing money in recent years on that contract, but city leaders quick to point out that tens of thousands of fans attracted here each year are a big boost to a growing list of restaurants, hotels, and entertainment venues, not to mention national media exposure that's pegged at some $160 million. Last year, more than 40,000 fans attended Colts camp in Westfield. This year, that number expected to be substantially higher. In fact, six sellouts already recorded here at Grand Park. And I'm pleased now to be joined by Colts general manager, Chris Ballard. Chris, thanks for taking the time. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, we're doing uh, the show this week on the economic impact of, of Grand Park and the Colts being here. Uh, most NFL teams uh, these days have their camps on site at their facilities. Not the Colts. You brought it here and in part to open it up to fans. Well, I mean, Mr. Arce and I have talked a long time about this. And, you know, we think it's important that, you know, our fans get a close-up look. Um, not all the fans that come out here can afford to actually go to a game on Sunday. So I think it's a great opportunity, one, for our fans to connect with our players, see them, see them up close and live, uh, make a connection that's going to last a lifetime. I, look, I can remember as a little kid going to – uh, training camps and, and seeing players and, and guys who you see as your heroes when you're a little kid. And that chance to connect, I just think, is invaluable. Yeah. As you look at uh, these facilities, uh, you know, talking to people uh, uh, with the team and around the league, they look at this facility as maybe among the best facilities <laughs> in the league. Look, I mean, nothing against the other training. You know, I was with the Bears for a long time and also Kansas City, and they have great training camp setups. Um, but it'd be hard to believe that there's one better than Grand Park. Um, from a facility standpoint, from a field standpoint, uh, from a location standpoint, especially being so close to Indianapolis, I think all of it's a benefit for not only the Colts, but you know, the city. This is, a, again, a wins and losses league. How much pressure does that put on, coming off a tough year, four yep. wins last year, on you as an executive? I don't, people ask me the pressure question all the time, and I don't, <laughs> I could have to go get a real job. I get to work in football. Like I don't ever, and I'm grateful for that. Um, and you, you come to work, you do your the best work you can each and every day. Um, you stay focused on what the process is. You know, I know we're in an outcome league, but when you focus on the outcome, it, it, it sh it's short-sighted. Um, so the pressure to me doesn't, I, I probably put more pressure on myself than anybody else does. Mm -hmm. Um, so I enjoy, I love what I do. I work with great people. I'm fortunate in that way. Um, they give a lot of support, as, you know, and I try to support them any way I can. But from a pressure standpoint, I mean, look, I get to, I get to work in football. Yeah. And, and the unique element of working in the National Football League, uh, again, back to the pressure and the intricacies, the difficulties maybe of being a, an executive, uh, the hard salary cap and having to deal with issues like that, how does that play into 
into that whole situation. The good thing is we're all playing with the same rules, all right? So you got 32 teams and we're all playing with the, with the same rules. And you've got to figure out how to budget your money um, from a cash standpoint to where you can fit it, you know, within the cap and whatever the cap is. Um, and it, it's, it, it takes discipline. Um, you've got to be disciplined in your approach. And I think we've done a, I've got a Mike Bloom who does a tremendous job managing our salary cap. Um, I always keep, you know, we meet practically every day, you know, about where we're going, where we're heading, uh, what's a three year plan going to look like. Um, you know, he, we get in depth about where we're going to keep, to keep our thumb on uh, not only the present, but also the future. Uh, you've already mentioned the best part of be, about being a general manager in football. What's the most challenging? What's the most difficult part of your job? <laughs> the, there's a new problem, every, and I wouldn't say it's the most difficult, but there's a new problem every day. And I, and I like, I mean, that's part of what you, like naturally who I am, I enjoy solving problems. Um, and I would tell you that, and that's the most difficult part of it is the daily problems that pop up, but it's also... I would tell you that one of the parts that I really love about the job is that it's never stale. There's always something new. Um, and each day set of problems is an opportunity to really grow and, you know, work through them. Got to ask you, I know you're probably not going to answer, but Jonathan Taylor, does that deal get, uh, does that deal happen? Does that, that problem uh, get, get resolved? I don't think it's a, I mean, like it's, it's, part of, it's part of the business. You know, one, number one, Jonathan's got to get healthy, which I think he's getting close to do. And those things always find the way to work themselves out. We, we think very highly of Jonathan Taylor. Um, he's been a great player for us, you know, here in the, you know, in the past and, and hopefully is in the future. Chris Ballard, general manager thank of the you. Indianapolis Colts. Thanks yeah, very much. Good thank luck you. this season. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Well, new coach, new quarterback, a new buzz surrounding the Colts this year. But will it translate into getting more fans to ditch watching games from the comfort of the couch and head to check out the action at Lucas Oil Stadium? Plus, the domino effect of Colts Camp in Westfield. We'll look at what kind of economic impact camp is having on the region. Gary, on behalf of myself and the entire team at the Indianapolis Airport Authority, we want to congratulate you for your 25 years of exceptional journalism and everything that you've done for the community. You are in my opinion, the finest journalist I've ever met, and we are so incredibly lucky to have you in this community. Congratulations again. By Sunday, your groomed, finished field, fans in the stands, and a completely different setup that even didn't even have seats. Certain people were sitting on Sunday. You're sitting in those north end zone seats. They weren't even there. And then all of a sudden, Sunday, you're enjoying your popcorn and beer and having a good time. That's Joe Fonderoli, the guy in charge of the game day experience for Indianapolis Colts fans at Lucas Oil Stadium. He sets the table for them to enjoy watching games in person. But the challenge for Joe and the Colts and all NFL teams, how do you convince those fans to give up the big screen at home and head to the stadium for that firsthand game experience? It is a business challenge that is top of mind for Colts Chief Sales and Marketing Officer Roger Vandersnick. In the ticket sales, sweet sales game, you know, coming off disappointing season, let's face it, uh, what kinds of challenges does that present uh, in terms of ticket sales? Sure. I think it, it reinforces one of the things that's very important to us, which is the game day experience is about the entire day. It's about coming to the game, it's about pre-game, it's about the game presentation during the game, halftime, post-game. And so we invest uh, a lot of time and attention and resources into delivering a wonderful game day experience. Um, we measure that every game with thousands of surveys to a variety of ticket holders to understand what their experience is like. We measure those and then we act on them and prepare and make changes for the upcoming game. So it really does point, put uh, an emphasis on the entire game day experience. When you talk about competitors uh, to a Colts Sunday, is one of those big competitors big screen TVs? Uh, we compete against discretionary time. Yeah. 
Um, people have so many choices on how they spend their times on weekends, and that time is really valuable to many folks. And so they make decisions about how they want to spend their time. So um, TVs, other entertainment options, time spent with their families, that's what we compete with. And so in order to do that, we have to deliver an amazing experience when you come down to Lucas Oil Stadium. Well, the Colts are one of only eight NFL teams to conduct training camp off-site at places like Grand Park in Westfield. A big reason for that is fan engagement. Our Mary Rachel Redman with what it means for the city of Westfield. Well, Gary, since 2018, Grand Park's taken center stage come late July, early August as the epicenter of all things Colts football, attracting thousands to Hamilton County. So just how big of an economic impact does Colts camp have on Westfield? Well, if you ask Mayor Andy Cook, the answer is priceless. Well, there's a lot of uh, direct and indirect difficult to, to measure. I think that probably our biggest return on the on the Colts camp is the national recognition. The unearned media uh, from having NFL TV here, from having the national uh, media here. And you know, I, I read it in the paper every day in the, in the national publications. And I, I love that byline that says Westfield, Indiana. Now, what exactly does that do for us? Well, I can document several cases where people, their very first, People, residents and business people, their very first introduction uh, to Grand Park was visiting or hearing about the Colts. What many may not know, building Grand Park was a bit of a pipe dream just 15 years ago. We kind of took a little uh, uh, risk, uh, a gamble. A lot of people thought I was pretty nuts. Uh, and uh, we decided we're going to go into the tourism business and build the industry of hospitality. To, to have the Colts here uh, gives us a, a huge uh, level of professionalism. It's, it's all about identity. I mean, look, what, what municipality uh, invests in, in something that you get a direct return on? It's all about a municipality creating an environment, uh, a place, if you will, where people and businesses want to be. And the, and the Colts are, are, have become a huge part of that. When asked about some criticism by some who say the Colts camp doesn't create revenue for Grand Park, Cook had this to say. The Colts are just one of the aspects out here. Uh, we had three and a half million visits go through this park last year. You have to look the finances of the entire Grand Park not just the Colts camp, the whole annual thing here. And if you exclude the debt, which is now being paid by the property taxes collected commercially, by the businesses that were attracted here, uh, the campus, purely from an operational standpoint, including the Colts operation, it's an $8 billion business in revenue. And last year alone, the city netted $2 million in operational profit that we put right back into the park. So does Grand Park make money? Yes, it does. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Also making headlines around the state. <laughs> Positive signs for Hoosier farmers. A new Purdue survey showing land values continuing to grow, with the average price for an acre of land right now at more than $13,500. Good Samaritan Hospital investing $300,000 at Ivy Tech Community College campuses in Evansville and Terre Haute. The goal? To train more nurses and other health care employees. The partnership will support campus renovations, develop talent pipelines, and expand student enrollment at each campus to help fill the gap in skilled medical workers. Tyson Foods Inc. is closing four chicken processing plants, including one in southern Indiana, as it looks to lower costs. In a notice to the state, Tyson said the closure could leave nearly 370 employees out of work in Corridon. The last day of production there will be March 1st of next year. And Fort Wayne getting the nod to host the National Wheelchair Basketball Association Women's and Military Championships next year. The competition expected to attract 300 athletes from across the country. Gary, back to you. All right, Mary Rachel, thank you.
Well, just ahead, the Colts making a mark in professional sports with what used to be an unspoken health issue. This is the first time an NFL team has stamped their mark on mental health. That's Colts vice chair and owner Kalen Ursay Jackson on the team's Kicking the Stigma campaign. Much more on that when we return. Music is a great outlet, you know, for those, you know what I'm saying, dealing with mental health as far as being able to express and also listen to music to help you ease your pain and ease your way through the day. It doesn't get much bigger than music icon Snoop Dogg throwing his support behind the Indianapolis Colts kicking the stigma mental health campaign. The mission, urge those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction to get help. Well, the Indianapolis Colts kicking the stigma campaign is shining a light on a health issue that has largely been in the shadows and often misunderstood. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Kylie. Thank you, Gary. This is Indiana, and Hoosiers by nature pay attention to sports. So the Colts are using their stage, perhaps the biggest stage in all of Indiana sports, to help Hoosiers talk openly about mental health. And joining me now is the director of Kicking the Stigma, Brett Kramer. Brett, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about the most obvious place we should start, which is the stigma. It's in the title of the campaign. It's not just a mental health, mental health campaign. It's focused on the stigma. Why is that such an important focus, and why do we need to dismantle it? Absolutely. When Kicking the Stigma was launched in 2020, we realized that a lot of people just don't openly talk about mental health. They talk about, I broke my arm, I went to the doctor today, but they don't talk about anxiety. They don't talk about depression. And we really want to normalize these conversations because it's, the more it's normal in our everyday language, the more people People feel freely to openly talk about it. And obviously the Colts players leading the charge in that. Some of the players talk openly. That makes average Hoosiers feel like they can talk openly about it. Absolutely. Mental health does not discriminate. And an NFL player can be open about their mental health struggles, then why can't somebody in Fishers or in Lafayette talk about their mental health struggles? And it's just important to realize that no matter who you are, no matter what you do for a living, it can impact you, and that's okay. We had a guest uh, run through the shot there. We like that. Uh, the other major piece of this campaign is sort of the action piece, mm -hmm. the money. So explain to us how you're using the money, not just to talk about awareness, but to really help the people who have the boots on the ground, who are doing the help, to really get in touch with Hoosiers and help them with their mental Absolutely. health. Absolutely. At the Colts, we're not mental health experts, so we like to give money away through our action grants to those that are doing the real work in the space throughout the state of Indiana. So we are giving out, we've given out millions of dollars, 24 to be exact, right. throughout the state of Indiana, really putting money to those organizations that are handling things in their communities, just making it a better space for people to get mental health treatment, but also create conversations as well. And you have an announcement coming up this week. You sort of have the next batch of that money rolling out, yes, right? Yes, we're excited next week to announce our action grants for the third year in a row. And once again, just giving money to the real experts in the space so that way they can continue Continue to make a difference through their missions. Indiana has a lot of health challenges. You could have focused on any health challenge in Indiana. Why mental health? Why do the Ursays feel so passionate about that? It's a it's an area in which is very personal to the Ursay family, and they've been very open and honest with their family struggles, and they've used their platform with the Colts and the clout that the family has to really make a difference throughout the community and get people to talk about it. All right. Well, Brett, thank you for being here with us and talking to, talking to us about it today. Colts, the first NFL franchise to really tackle the stigma behind mental health, so a very important issue. Gary, back to you. Next, hear from current Colts players and a former head coach on how the 2023 season is shaping up. Join IBJ on Friday, September 8th for our annual commercial real estate power breakfast. Moderator Mickey Shuey and a panel of experts will discuss the importance of new construction to Indiana's bottom line. You can RSVP by September 1st at IBJ.com slash events. First year coming in, you know, you're kind of open mind, trying to take it all in at one time. Um, but now it's kind of like I've been through it all, kind of seeing everything and kind of like approaching the same way as keeping keep my mind, you know, relaxed, staying calm and knowing that just, you know, it's part of the process and enjoying it along the way. That's Colts receiver Ashton Doolin reflecting on his growth after arriving at his first Colts camp five years ago from Division II Malone College. Last year, Doolin earned second team All-Pro honors 
as a special teamer. Enjoy it with your family. We in the city, man. The Colts camp is the first for Indianapolis native and former Warren Central Warrior Juju Brents, a second round pick from Kansas State who says it feels a bit surreal. I've been a coach fan my whole life. My dad was a coach fan before I was born, so it was crazy. It was pretty surreal. Uh, just growing up in the community and now playing for the Horseshoe, uh, it's a great feeling. Okay, Drew! Yes, sir. 100% just being the best me, uh, coming out here with the right mentality every day, and that's just growing 1% better every day. I know I put a tweet out about that the other day. Uh, so just every day to see some improvement, keep improving, and uh, just coming out here and competing. Competing, yeah. that's what got me here. Well, certainly the Business and Beyond podcast, more than 120 episodes in all, well represented by the Colts from owner Jim Ursay to radio analyst Rick Venturi. I'll never forget it. The snow is falling, it's dark, and it's quiet in Owings Mills, quiet as a mouse outside our complex. I hear that first Mayflower truck in first gear because there was a hill coming up that hill so loud. And I said, my God the whole state of Maryland can hear this. I mean, it was unbelievable. Former Colts head coach Rick Venturi, now the team's radio analyst on new Colts quarterback, Anthony Richardson. This is a kid with uber talent, uber talent. Now, this move changes the landscape of what we know, myself and everyone, of Colts football. This isn't Peyton Manning. It's not Andrew Luck. It isn't the style of play that we're used to since the Colts have been here when I came on the Mayflower. And then Colts defensive great Robert Mathis gave us insight into the prankster Peyton Manning. All the pranks that he pulled, I witnessed them. So he never, he, he tried to get me one time. And that was my rookie year uh, with the trash can leaning on the door. At, at a wedge. <laughs> I said, man, no. No, sir, you're not going to get me with that because I just saw you do that to somebody else down the hall. He's at the 10, makes a man miss. He's at the 5, cuts back, spun forward. He's close to the goal line. Touchdown! Touchdown! The voice of the Indianapolis Colts, Matt Taylor, joined us and shared his spot-on impression of legendary IU game caller Don Fisher. We're back at the Rock here Memorial Stadium where Indiana takes on the Iowa Hawkeyes. We're about 15 minutes away from game action. Here's Joe Smith with a look at the Crimson and Gold Cup update. We're back in a moment. This is Indiana University football from Learfield. Check out all of our Colts conversations on the Business and Beyond podcast. All you have to do is go to InsideIndianaBusiness.com. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's edition of the show. I want to thank the Indianapolis Colts for their hospitality and hosting us here at Grand Park in Westfield for training camp. The Colts kick off the season at Lucas Oil Stadium. September 10. I'm Gary Dick. Thanks for joining us. Go out and make it a successful week.